happiness. According to Aristotle, it is the meaning and purpose of life. The whole aim and end of human existence. But you don't need an ancient philosopher to tell you that happiness is very important. I mean, who actually enjoys being unhappy? Nobody. Nobody. Because when you're happy, everything in life seems to be going all right, even if it's not. And you can have everything in the world, but if you're unhappy, none of that will matter. Happiness is so powerful that scientists have even tried to measure it. Now, you might be thinking, how can you measure happiness? That's crazy. Well, what they've done is they just ask people simple questions like, how happy or satisfied are you with your life overall on a scale from one to 10? By doing so, they allow people to report on how happy they believe themselves to be based on their own criteria. They asked these questions to people all over the world, and when they had enough data, they were able to figure out how happy nations are as a whole based on the average reported happiness of their citizens. Now we are able to compare each country's happiness with things such as GDP, life expectancy, literacy rate, poverty, and other socioeconomic factors, allowing us to see how happiness correlates with wealth, health, literacy, knowledge, etc., etc. It's literally fascinating. There's so much to be gathered from this information, but let's just look at small part of all this for now. This chart over here shows how GDP per capita correlates with happiness. Now GDP per capita is basically the average income of each citizen of a certain country. At first glance, this graph seems to show a positive correlation between GDP and happiness. Basically that means as the GDP of a nation increases, so does its happiness. Surprise, surprise! But let's take a closer look and see what this graph really tells us. You can follow the trend up until about the $60,000 mark. After that, there's no more increases in happiness. In fact, happiness even decreases slightly, despite Luxembourg having almost twice the GDP of Denmark. But what's even more fascinating is the happiest countries are nowhere near the highest end of the GDP chart. Costa Rica has the highest happiness value at 8.5, yet their GDP per capita is less than $10,000. That's less than a minimum wage employee makes full time here in the USA. Speaking of USA, our happiness comes in at about 7.4, which isn't that bad, but considering our GDP per capita is almost five times more than that of Costa Rica, shouldn't we be doing better? Our happiness rating is even lower than that of Mexico, which is way behind us on the GDP chart. Now what's going on here? Well, for one, wealth can only get you so far in terms of happiness. This data proves that once you reach a certain level of income, anything more doesn't really add any happiness value to your life. So if you want to be happy, don't make getting rich your number one priority. Also, since the happiest countries are on the lower end of the GDP scale, it can only mean one thing. Money does not equal happiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And now you have the science to prove it. Yeah, I know. For most people, that's a pretty obvious fact. But some people need a reminder. Talking to you, Drake. Niggas with no money act like money isn't everything. Anywho, all that data is there for you to see. Just check out these links below and find out for yourself. Make your own conclusions. Think. It's cold. Great.